Hey guys, this is Neil with Catalyst Machine Works, and I am in a giant echo chamber speaking to you right now. I'm just kidding. I'm actually in my new garage. We just moved, and it's a uh, it's a gigantic three car garage, and it makes quite the echo. So I apologize. Um, I have another surprise for you. I'm using black gloves today. Right? Kind of sinister. I'm like the evil version of myself. <laughs> Okay, enough being silly. Let's get down to business. All right, so this is the Shocker assembly video. This is the ultralight version of the Shocker. And this is not going to be a full build from soup to nuts where I go and install all the electronics and do all of that. I'm basically going to go through and show you how the frame goes together itself. And then I'm going to show you references to what it looks like when you've got the various components installed into the frame. Okay, this is a really super easy build as far as uh, FPV craft go. So I don't think you're gonna have much problem building this even if you are a new builder. So let's go ahead and get started. These are the components that come with the frame. Okay, we have them all laid out here. We've got a couple Velcro straps. I'm gonna go ahead and put those to the side. We've got this bag of fasteners. Right, I'm going to take this bowl right here. This happens to be a bowl that's designed for a baby. So if you own a baby, man, you're looking good. You're going to have a baby bowl. Okay, if you don't own a baby, go out and get yourself one. They usually come with these baby bowls. They're perfect for putting FPV fasteners in. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that you want to do with this build is to put together this main uh, sort of fuselage section here. This is called the cross brace, this piece that has the little uh, little uh, press nuts pressed into it right here. And then you join that to the top plate by way of some screws that run into the uh, run through the arms. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that part. All right, so I've removed all of the components we're not going to be using in this step and I've taken out the fasteners we are going to use. So the kit comes with steel arm screws. These are little button head screws. If you opted to buy the optional uh, aluminum upgrade, what it includes are aluminum uh, anodized versions of those screws. And then obviously other various locations, you can see that there's uh, other screws come in that kit. So that is up to you which route you want to go. So let's go ahead and get the right driver and we will begin building. So you'll notice that this top plate is countersunk and so that's to help with um, getting ahead of this screw down lower so that it's not coming into contact with things like lipos. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start here. One thing I do want to mention is that if you go ahead and decide to use the aluminum upgrade for the arm screws, you need to be careful, okay? Aluminum, even though these are 70, 75 aircraft grade high-end aluminum screws, it's a soft material. So don't act like the Hulk and go and, uh, you know, strip out the head of your bolt. You got to be careful. I mean, these are, it's not a socket head bolt. It is or a socket head screw. It's a button head screw. So if you take this thing and you really just start wrenching on it, you're just going to strip it out. So be careful. Well, you're not going to have the, as much of a problem with the steel screws because they're a harder material. Okay, that part is done. We've got that together. Kind of looks like a bat. Look at that. 
All right, for the next part of the build, what you're gonna do is install your motors, install the front brace, and the speed controller. Okay, so as a reference, I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the finished build here. Okay, so we got the ESC installed in the center. Obviously your motor's on the ends of the arm. Now, to install the brace, what you want to do is use these four M2 by 8 millimeter screws that come in the kit. Okay, those are going to go through the brace, through the arm, and then into the motor. Okay, and then for these other locations, just use the screws that come with your motors. Okay, and then to install the motors in the back, use the screws that come with the motors right here. All right. Now, um, what I'm going to talk about is this ESC and the stack in general. Um, this is mounted upside down. So this is the top here where the battery goes. And then underneath in the belly is where your stack is. Okay, so that's a little bit unorthodox. Um, some people aren't used to that. This design is, or this portion of the design is reminiscent of Tommy's design, which was a uh, the remix. Uh, he goes by Umagod. Okay, so if you're familiar with that build, this will be no problem for you. And even if you've never done one of these builds, really, uh, once you start it, it's super easy because all you're doing is just building up your stack on a plate like you're used to. It's just whenever the thing flies, it's upside down. Okay, so you'll have to make uh, adjustments and account for that fact in software, but it's not really hard to do. Okay, so to install your stack or to install the ESC, what you want to do is use the fasteners that come with the stack. Okay, if you don't have any fasteners that came in your stack, well, you're going to have to get some. But with that said, I did include these. These are M2 by 20 millimeter screws and they're button head. The reason, I, the reason I included these is a lot of stacks come with socket head M2 screws. So the head itself is very tall. Well, we've got, let me show you this here, we've got these portions here countersunk, as you can see. And the reason for that is to get that screw down low enough to where it's not going to mess up your battery or cut into the plastic on your battery. But even with this recess, some of these uh, socket head screws can still protrude up past the carbon fiber surface. So what you can do is use these screws instead of what comes with your stack, if it just happens to come with M2 screws. Okay. Now, what you want to use in combination with that is these little washers. These are M2 washers that come in the kit. There's four of these. So you'll use it like this. Okay. Install it here, all right? And then obviously do that four times. Okay, and you can see that when you do this, it is pretty much even with the top surface here. So no issues with putting your batteries on. All right. Now, um, for the rest of the build, as I put this thing together, um, you know, I'm not going to have any motors, so this front brace is going to kind of be floating in here, but that shouldn't be a problem. Now I'm going to explain how to install the Vista. Okay, so you can see on this one how this guy's installed. So it's in the rear here. And what we're using to actually affix this to the frame, to the top plate, is this little piece of plastic. Okay, so the way this thing, this thing works is you locate this on the top plate and do it such as such that these little runners here, let's see if I can get this thing to focus. There we go. Okay, you can see these little ridges right there and right there. You want them to be going this direction. Okay, and the reason for that is your Velcro strap is going to go through here. Okay, so the this thing is actually designed 
to whenever you install it, it is providing a little slot that your Velcro strap goes through. Okay, so what you want to do is get these little tiny screws. These are self-tapping screws. There's four of them. So we'll get those out. Okay, and we are going to install this such that the flat surface is facing you and these little ridges are running in this direction. And it's pretty easy. We're just going to go ahead and take a screwdriver, Phillips head, and flip this guy over. This. All right. Now, you can see that the little head, the end of the screw is peeking out the plastic. Don't worry about that. It's going to go up into the bores on the Vista stack. So that has nothing to worry about. Now I'm going to explain how to install the Vista. Okay. So you can see on this one how this guy's installed. So it's in the rear here. And what we're using to actually affix this to the frame, to the top plate, is this little piece of plastic. Okay, so the way this thing, this thing works is you locate this on the top plate and do it such as such that these little runners here, let's see if I can get this thing to focus. There we go. Okay, you can see these little ridges right there. And right there, you want them to be going this direction. Okay, and the reason for that is your Velcro strap is going to go through here. Okay, so the this thing is actually designed to, whenever you install it, it is providing a little slot that your Velcro strap goes through. Okay, so what you want to do is get these little tiny screws. These are self-tapping screws. There's four of them. So we'll get those out. Okay, and we are going to install this such that the flat surface is facing you and these little ridges are running in this direction. And it's pretty easy. We're just going to go ahead and take a screwdriver, Phillips head, and flip this guy over. Like this. All right. Now, you can see that the little head, the end of the screw is peeking out the plastic. Don't worry about that. It's going to There we go. So we got that little piece installed. See how that looks there. 
All right, so the next step, what you want to do, get some double-sided stick tape. Make sure before you install the stick tape to get some alcohol, some isopropyl alcohol, and rub it on here. And then on the mating surface of your Vista, do the same, rub a little alcohol on it, and then boop, plop it down right there and install the Vista. Okay, easy peasy. Now, next step, what we're gonna go ahead and do is to put the cage plates on. And we're gonna start in the back and work our way up to the front. So let's go ahead and get started. These two here, these are the rear cage plates. Okay, you're gonna need a couple M3 by eight millimeter screws. These are aluminum. And then we've got some aluminum M3 lock nuts. This fits in here just like this. Now you may be wondering, why does it have this little piece that's extending right here? Okay, the reason for that is when you install this like this, okay, if you have a crash, let me show you on the built system. If you have a crash where you come down and you slam the ground and there's a force that goes in this direction, well that little piece right there that's extending through this plate and into the top plate stops this from breaking this component, stops this from breaking the cross brace. So that's the reason for it. Okay, so what we want to do is position this nut. And this can take a little bit of finesse. Let me get my, my um, needle nose pliers. It's really hard if you have gloves, okay? <laughs> None of you are gonna be using gloves, but if you're not using gloves, it's really not that difficult. Okay, so now I've got it positioned. But this is probably the most difficult part on the whole build. Once you get past this, everything's pretty easy. Installed there. And do the next one. See there, I'm getting better at it already. I didn't have to use my needle nose. Both of those installed there. Looking good. Right, let's go on to the next step. So what we're going to do is put on these two right here. So let's grab those. Notice that these components are not symmetric, so they go in a certain way. All right. And the way that they go in is this part, that flat part, is on the bottom of the craft, so the belly of the craft. That goes to the front. That goes toward the back. 
Okay, we're gonna need one of our standoffs, a couple screws. These are M3 by eight millimeter aluminum screws. And this little plate goes to the outside of the other plates, okay? So run it through like this, make sure it's oriented properly. And then position your standoff and run it in. Okay, do the same thing for the other side. Okay, now let's go ahead and install the front plates and the brace. Okay, now I, you know, if I had the motors in here, this front brace would already be installed, but I don't, so you got to use your imagination. All right, so what we're going to do, get another standoff, get a couple more of the M3 by eight millimeter screws. Position this guy. This locks in here like this. Okay, keep in mind that this plate is going to the outside of that one. And then go ahead and install this screw into the standoff. Okay, once you get yours installed, it's gonna look like this. All right, all right, before I go any farther, I want to mention some differences between the five inch frame, that's what we have here, and the four inch version. I just so happen to have a four inch version right here. Look at that. Oh my goodness, look at that header. I'll let you make your own assumptions about that. <laughs> there we go, so let's open this thing up. And I'm gonna show you the differences. There's only a couple differences, really, as far as the build process goes. Okay, let's find it. The four inch comes with this additional piece right here. Okay, you see that? This is just a little tiny piece of 3D printed plastic. It's basically two circles with a, with a piece connecting them. And what that is used for is on the four inch version, the arms are not four millimeter, they're three millimeter thick. So what that causes in this location, right here, is a little space. Okay, so to take up that space, you want to put this guy. All right, and so it's going to fit underneath these little protrusions on this side plate. Okay, you're going to stick it in there 
to take up that space. Pretty self-explanatory. Now, another thing that's going to happen is since your arms are three millimeter here, you are now going to have a little space between the brace and the arm. So to take that up in the four inch kit, we've got these little tiny M2 aluminum washers. Okay? And they just so happen to be the perfect distance, or the perfect thickness rather, to take up that space. So you want to have those washers in between the arm and the brace, okay, in there, in all four locations, one, two, three, four. And those are the only differences between the five inch that I have here and the four inch version. Okay, let's discuss mounting in the Vista camera to the front cage plates here. Let me show you how this camera is installed. Okay, so it's pretty self-explanatory. You can see how that's installed there. You're going to use the two M2 screws, or actually, I'm sorry, the four M2 screws that come in the kit. Put them here, and there. And the way that this thing works is these slots have a geometry that conforms to an arc. And so when you loosen these up, that allows you to change the angle of your camera. Okay, so you can get some pretty decent angle on this thing. You can get like 60 degrees, 65 degrees, all the way down to like zero. Now this little slot right here in the center is if you're not running HD. That's if you're running a old school, old school, okay, an FPV years like a month is old school. But if we're running an old school analog camera, it's got one hole, right? You just got the one screw on either side, so you can use this little slot for that type of camera. Okay, now that pretty much sums up the camera. Let's go to the back and talk about installing the included 3D printed antenna holder for your Vista antenna. All right. This is it right here. And the way that this thing works, take one of your standoffs, press it through the bore here. Okay, and you want to center Center it up as good as you can, like that. All right. Now, the way that this thing is installed is you've got these holes here, and there's this little tiny hole there. You've got this hole here, and these little holes there. So what you want to do is grab your M3 by six millimeter aluminum screws. There's two of them. Get this into position. Go ahead and install those screws. Just like that. Now these little bits here are for indexing this 3D printed part. So when you take two more of these little self-tapping screws that come in the kit and you run them through these holes 
and into the mating holes on the 3D part, those are going to locate this part. There we go. And that's what it looks like when it's done. My camera is really terrible at focusing. <laughs> Good God. I think it's time for a new camera. And so that's how that works. Let me show you what this looks like with the antenna installed. Okay, you've got these little, these little ridges here. You can use a zip tie to locate your antenna. And you want to kind of mess with this antenna and get it to where, you know, it's kind of going to be sticking out this way. You can heat this up and position it such that it's sticking straight up. And what you want to do is take the tube on the antenna and locate it such that it's as far, it's as far this direction, it's as high up as possible. The higher that you can get this antenna, the better video reception you're going to get. Now, Caddx actually has an extended version of this antenna. It's like this tall. And if you go ahead and get that, up, that upgrade, it's going to help you with your video reception quite a bit. Okay, so that's how that works. Now, it is time for us to go ahead and talk about accessories because that's pretty much it. I mean, this, this frame is put together. I told you it was really simple. Right, so let's talk about the accessories and what different things come with this kit. The first thing I'm going to discuss, let's go ahead and dump them out here. Okay, well the first thing I'll discuss, uh, which I mentioned previously, is the aluminum upgrade. And we've got aluminum upgrade where you can do all the aluminum screws in really cool colors. So this is purple, we've got blue, and we've got red. Alright, so the next set of upgrades is for the braces. So we've got some rear braces that you can opt to use. And these are really lightweight, but they're nice because they're going to give you some extra crash toughness in the rear of this thing. You'll notice that since this is a dead cat and just the geometry of this thing, the rear arms are very, very long and they come out way out here. Okay, So they're going to be more susceptible to breaking because of that. If you put a brace in here, it goes across here, it's going to help you out to give some more structural integrity to the rear arms. All right, the next accessory that we've got, move so many screws out of the way, is this little guy. This is a GPS mount for the front of the craft. Okay, this is made out of a harder uh, 3D printed material. And the way that it works, it's very simple. It goes here. Okay, you're going to position it like such. And this actually has these little these little nipples right there. Okay, so you want to line those up to the holes in the front here. Use this portion at the back so that it gets the GPS level and then it's going to come with four of these little self-tapping screws. So obviously you run the self-tapping screws in through here. You can use some double-sided stick tape or this dual lock to install your GPS onto here. Okay. Now why are we including this weird dual lock velcro. Okay, some of you are going to be familiar with this if you're into racing. A lot of racers use this. The reason that I am including this is because it allows you to mount things to these surfaces and then remove them quite easily. Okay. Additionally, the sticky tape that is on this particular type of Velcro is very, very good for some reason. It sticks to everything, and it sticks to everything quite well. It even sticks to TPU. Right? The surface of TPU 
does not lend itself well to double-sided stick tape, I've found. However, for some reason, it works with this stuff. So what you do if you want to install your GPS is get some alcohol, rub it on here, rub it on, uh, rub it on this piece, rub it on the GPS unit itself, install this, Okay, you can cut it however you want it. You can shape it however you'd like with scissors. Then take a heat gun and heat this part up. Right? Don't melt it, but get it nice and warm. That is really going to get this thing stuck on here and it's not ever going to come off. Right? And you can do the same thing to the other one and then you've got your GPS mounted on there. Now you can look and see how I've done this one here. Okay, and I've also got a little zip tie just running through there. So that's just to make sure that if I was to get into a crash that this GPS unit doesn't come off of here. Now the, the reason that I've done all of this madness is because I went out and I looked at how people are mounting GPS to these, uh, these craft and a lot of people are having to design 3D printed mounts that conform specifically to a specific type of GPS. Well, that doesn't work very good because then you're pigeonholed into one type of GPS. So these mounts that I've come up with allow you to mount any GPS that you may have onto it. And I think that that's a pretty cool feature. All right, so we have the various types of GPS mounts. I've already mentioned this one that goes in the front. Okay, and you can use normal sided, double sided stick tape or normal type double-sided stick tape on this front GPS mount if you like because this surface works well with that. This isn't TPU. These guys, I suggest to use what it comes with. Now there's different types of mounts here. We've got this one here that will accept GPS and Crossfire. Like you can see I've got installed on my machine here. Okay. And then to, and obviously to install your crossfire, you're just going to use zip ties through here. You see how it's installed there. Okay, or we've just got a GPS mount that is just nothing but a GPS mount. Right? There's no position there, or there's no location to put your crossfire in. Then we've got a crossfire mount. So this is to install your crossfire. Here's the little portions where you put your zip ties through, and that's how that works. Okay, now I need to show you something. This is very interesting how this actually works is I'm going to take this part off and show you how these pieces link together. Okay, so what's nice is that any number of accessories can all fit in this same location. All right, so let's go ahead and take that off. Okay, so, that was a plane flying over. That's loud. Okay, so look at this. The way that this thing works is this has got these little pieces of plastic on either side. And then this component is designed so that it links together with that. All right, so the way that this thing works is we're going to join them like this. These things are going to link together. Make sure you get them oriented right. That side goes in like that. This side goes in like that. Okay, so if you see, they fit together like that. And this part is indexing that part and making sure that it is in the right orientation. So now we'll go ahead and install this back in. Okay, so you can screw it back in and that's how that's going to work. Pretty easy. Alright, let's discuss a subject that I get asked all the time 
uh, with regards to this Shocker Ultralight. And that is GoPro mounts. A lot of people ask me, hey man, hey bro, is there gonna be a GoPro mount? And I say, yes. I say to them, yes. Yes, my FPV friends. There is gonna be a GoPro mount. However, um, I think you're gonna be disappointed if you try and mount a heavy GoPro on this machine. Okay, keep in mind that your GoPro, let's say you use a GoPro 8 Black and a mount, all of that is going to weigh about the same as this craft. So it's kind of like pulling a horse trailer with a Prius. Can you do it? Sure, you can do it. Should you do it? Mm, I think you need to think long and hard about that. Okay, up to you, whatever you want to do. Um, really, in my opinion, if you're going to run a GoPro, let me show you what you should use. This, this is the tank version of the Shocker we have for sale right now. And this is designed for gigantic motors. Look at the difference here, guys. Okay, <laughs> look at this. Okay, motor for GoPros. Motor not for GoPros. Tiny motor, big motor. Okay, so you wanna use a more standard sty style of freestyle frame, like the Shocker freestyle tank, if you're gonna run a GoPro, in my humble opinion. Now with that said, the Insta360 camera, they've got a little tiny one. You know, that'd be good for running on here. Maybe you can get away with a GoPro session, but one of these big honkers, hmm, I don't know. Okay, so that brings a close to the assembly video and the accessories discussion for the Shocker Ultralight. I am also going to do an assembly video for the Shocker Tank once we get those in um, because it's, its assembly is a bit different. All right, if you guys have any questions, feel free to email me at support at catalystmachineworks.com or info at catalystmachineworks.com, and we will answer your questions promptly. Thank you.